Okay, so for this, I'll mainly just be reading directly from the Word document. Um, so here it goes, Origin of Species, Introduction. Darwin starts by talking about his years of observation and study that he completed while aboard the Beagle, as well as the extensive notes and sketches that he took. Kindled by Mr. Wallace's arrival at near the same conclusion, Darwin decides to publish what he calls imperfect work on the origin of species. He states that through his observations, it appears that species are not created independently and placed in a particular location. Rather, they are they are descend through years of accumulating variation throughout generations. He writes that naturalists during his time contribute the variation only to external conditions like climate and food. Darwin argues that as well as external factors, it is a variety of conditions that contribute to the variety among, among species. He states that it is beneficial to study domesticated animals and cultivated plants to gain knowledge about the variation in species and their primordial, primordial origin. He states that domestication, domestication leads to selection of desired traits, which inevitably leads to variation. He goes on to talk about what he writes, plans to write about in the future chapters, including what circumstances are most favorable, favorable to variation. He states that the struggle for existence among species is due to limited resources and, <clears throat> and more individuals being born that then can survive. This leads to competition among populations in which the individuals with the traits most suitable to the conditions will survive and reproduce. Okay, and then my the summary of my assigned chapter is chapter six so in this chapter darwin discusses four questions that fascinate and stagger him about the theories of evolution he attempts to answer these questions through his extensive knowledge um, of the, and years of observation and research i will give a brief summary of the first two questions um, so Darwin questions first, why, if evolution is a gradual process, are there not countless intermediate species showing the gradualness of the process? In order to answer this, um, he begins by stating that the survivors of a competitive envir environment are the ones best suited to survive. This means <clears throat> that natural selection and extinction go hand in hand because the parent species and all its transitional forms pass away as a new species best best suited to its environment emerges. He goes on to explain that evolution is a very slow process in which new traits gradually emerge and inter intermediate species arise and survive or go extinct. The second question that fascinates him that he discusses is how species with habits and structures, habits and structures transition to species with completely ha different habits and structures. He writes that it is hard to determine what comes first, new varieties in structure leading to change in habit or vice versa. He states that both changes happen hand in hand and each, leads, each change leads to a bigger change in the other. Okay, <clears throat> so what next section is what scientific progress has been made on this subject. Um, so here it goes. In their article, Tavares et al studies the morphological and habitual variation among 50, 59 orzomian, orzomian species, which is South American rodents, and observed that diversification of movement, movement habits contribute to the morphological evolution over time. By viewing the bone structure, and they observed different shapes of both the hind limb and forelimb and concluded that some differences in the species, in various species of locomotion habits led to the gradual change in their physiological structure. They also noted that many species, many changes in the shapes and sizes of the limbs was directly impacted by the size of the species. For example, smaller, for, smaller body species, species required less effort from the limbs in locomotion which resulted in a large rodent species having smaller, lim smaller limb to body ratio. They found that especially in one species, the digging and burrow rodents had stronger muscles and thicker bones to help with digging. They found that these traits allowed them to be better diggers and enhance, were, enhanced, were enhanced over the years um, and as their habits changed to digging more and more. All these findings together indicate that habit 
and change and structural change go hand in hand. And in most cases, it is difficult to determine which comes first and which has the stronger impact. In their conclusion, the, in their conclusion is, is that it is difficult to tell which change comes first. For some structures, it seems that change in habit is the first domino, but for other changes, structural changes can be linked to the first cause. Okay, and then the next section, <clears throat> in their article, Lee et al. Research, researched the evolution of how owls become nocturnal. Ancient owl species that are now extinct were believed to be diurnal, awake during the day. Um, the, popul the popular conclusion is that owls became nocturnal was due to changes in their diet and activity and diet activity patterns, which forced them to hunt at night. Um, in their study, they state that this conclusion doesn't quite capture the full story. In their research, their study, they study ancient owl fossils and compare the various changes in their structure that might have contributed to this change in habit. They found that among various other character changes, <clears throat> Ancient owls had a stronger orbital structure, which supports the hypothesis that these extinct owls were day um, awake during the day. Did did these changes did these changes to nocturnal happen? Uh, nocturnal habits happen after the change in diet. This is a difficult question to answer, but Lee et al. seems to conclude that both the habit and morphological change impact one another and seem to go hand in hand. Overall, it seems to me that the evolutionary adaptation, each evolutionary adaptation is different. And sometimes it is the change in habit that comes first, but other times it is the change in structure. Nonetheless, um, it is evident to me that both change in habit and change in structure have a very, um, they go hand in hand and each impacts the other. Okay, and then the last section is on chapter 14. Um, in this chapter, Darwin gives a summary, summary of the tenets of evolution, especially natural selection. He starts with saying that there are many things that he does not understand about evolution and that many arguments can be made against him. He goes on to say that even though his theory of evolution is not complete, is not complete and flawless, there are facts about natural selection that cannot be denied. He states that the struggle for existence and competition over resources causes certain traits to be selected and preserved over others, and that this over time contributes to the variation we now see in species. Darwin states that the truth of these proposition, I cannot think, be disputed. Darwin states that the gradu gradual changes that are now more favorable for survival are passed down to down to generations. And over time, these changes give rise to new species that contribute to the amazing variety we now see. Overall, his theory was based on years of research and hard work and, and very well articulated and explained. So that's it. Thanks.